so we finished our four day class with TA Target out here in Pennsylvania and I've never actually visited the shop even though we've worked with them for a number of years. So we're out here today, we're shooting a complete video, start to finish, how these things are made, how they design them, why they design them like they do, why they're the best target on the market, why we use them, and of course we're visiting with the owners, Jared, Ethan, and Kirby, and you'll get to see in that future video, start to finish, how it's done. So Jared, what do we see going on behind you? Right now, Ethan is loading up a sheet of our half-inch AR550, which is pretty much the material that we are known for and what made us stand out from everybody else. He's putting that up on our CNC table, which burns out all of the products and pieces for all of our different assemblies, everything from ADAP tops to our target plates. Guys, we are walking over here to my business partner, Ethan, the dude behind all the production at TA Targets, getting all this stuff scheduled and in process. Hey, what are you burning? Half inch back to made ups. So for any of you that know us and what we do, that's the C-Zone plate, 12 inches wide, 24 inches tall and it's our favorite material, the half inch AR550. When we started TA Targets about a year into our company, we started playing with half inch AR550. We saw that there were pretty substantial gains in strength, audibility, um, and durability of the target systems over AR500. The downside of the AR550 was the initial cost for raw material. So those targets are gonna be a little bit more expensive but what we found is they actually offer way more value to the end user than selling just an industry standard AR500 steel. So over the last four years, half inch AR550 has pretty much overtaken our entire production as far as our materials are concerned. One of the comments we always get is steel is steel and people mistakenly believe that they can pretty much grab any material off of some fabrication shop shelf and use it for targets and that's just simply not the case. You could buy AR500 steel and many companies use this steel. But when you buy AR500 steel there's a huge specification range that the mill is going to call it acceptable. Even though the mill says it's acceptable it may not actually be safe enough for you to use for your steel target. For example you can buy a, a whole run of AR plate that's for example, with AR500 material, you could order it from the mill and it could be as low as 470 on the Brunel hardness scale. And that number is describing how hard the steel is. So the problem with that is if you just buy standard AR500, you may be getting really soft material. And when it's at the bottom end of the spectrum, it's not acceptable to use for steel targets. Many companies haven't made that distinction between the low end spec and high end spec. And because of that, there's targets on the market that just get destroyed prematurely. And that was one of the driving forces behind us moving away from AR500 steel. So when we go into the AR550 steel, it's a much stronger material. It's higher on the Brunel hardness scale, and that equates to the strength of the steel. And we also buy just from certain 
manufacturers of this AR550 and the specification window on the AR550 is much tighter than the AR500. So you're gonna end up with a better product every single time. If you look, if you look real at that plate, it says Hard Ox 550, but if you look closer, it has in big bold letters there, the mill number. That's a lot number of steel. We track that from start to finish, and we put stickers behind the angles on every plate that gets sold, every ADAP plate that gets sold, that tracks back to the mill sheet, so that if we have issues, we know this is the batch it came from. Just to clarify, that number is attached to this individual piece of steel. Yeah. You got a pallet of this stuff, each one individual number, like a barcode yep. for that piece. Yes. So if there's an issue, customer calls and it didn't hold up, which doesn't happen, you would know that came from this piece. You'd call your supplier. No, we know when we received the plate, we Except. have hardness certifications for the plate. We know when we burn the plate and what products it went to. I'm assuming most target makers are more interested in buying what's cheapest to cut. Yes. So this is not what's cheapest. Oh no, they're, this is not. The cheaper their material starts, the cheaper they can sell the product. This is why we can, and I've got some of your steel for several years that's been hit thousands and thousands of times and it's still smooth, this is why. This is why, it starts with the raw material and that's probably 80% of your battle is you have to get really good material for that foundation. And then after the material, you move into the design and, and the design has an effect on it as well. But super cool. Yeah, that's where it starts right here. And that sheet, it's super heavy. It's 48 square feet and it weighs 20 pounds per square foot. So it's not light. So how much does that weigh? Over 800 pounds. Wouldn't it be 800 pounds? Yeah. yeah wow. Over 800 pounds. Man-sized stuff. You could pick that up. Yeah. With, I, I see it. Yeah, that would be that. This is dangerous stuff. I mean, people get hurt, right? Yeah, we use equipment, obviously forklifts to move it around. We have a crane, which you can't see, but it's overhead that has magnets that we can pick sheets up. You guys, people that are in the machining and fabricating business, this is old hat to them. But to us that are the consumer, it's pretty cool to see you have you've laid out and basically figured out how to just like mom rolling out cookies. Yeah, you figured out how to get as many cookies out of the the roll of dough as possible. Yeah, so. It starts out, like I said, in the office over with me. We have AutoCAD drawings that I create with the parts as we're going through different prototyping and different product development. Once we get to that end product, the next step is making burn programs for it. And with those burn programs, I have a program called OmniWin that makes our nest, which is like Mick said, just kind of like a cookie cutter sheet stacking them in as efficiently as possible because we don't want to waste a ton of material. We want to get as much product out of it as possible. And so after I nest the products, they end up going out to our server, which is going to drop them on our CNC table. And then Ethan or Max can pull up the program, set the table, zero it, and then pretty much hit the go button from there. How long will it take to cut all those? What do you got, 16 pieces or something on there? 20 pieces? How long will that take? I don't know, half hour or so? Yeah, half 45 hour, minutes. 45 minutes. minutes. So then when you're done, you, you end up, eventually you get a scrap pile of stuff like that. And you guys have figured out ways to use that stuff to make like your fire ring and different things like that you've used your scraps for. Well, pretty much everything at this point in our company has become what we call master programs. We just fill sheets up end to end. We try to avoid scrap at all costs. So even everything down to our paddles, our brackets, it's all as many as we can fit on a sheet. That's what we call our master and we run them over and over and over and over again for cool. the inventory. Okay, I'm with Kirby now, the president of TA Targets and we just showed you guys the table running, burning some of the products and so we're gonna actually take a walk over here to our racks and show you what they look like when they are assembled. So Mick, let's go on over here. All right, so this this is the stuff. Yeah. I'm just gonna pick one up. Then. Okay. So that's cut off of what we yep. just saw. Yes. Yep. That's a 
a finished plate. It has its brackets bolted onto it. Does, do I see somebody did some grinding? A little bit. We touched okay. the whole touch surface the edges, up. So there's no sharp edges. Here. Okay. Yep. That's all it requires. Is just touch the edges, take that fur off. And then uh, bolt the angles to the back. And that's where your head bracket fits in right there and your target pivots in that hole. I see. Super so this cool. one's this one's ready for paint. Grade five, grade eight. Grade eight bolt. Okay. And then mechanical locking nuts in the back. Just so that they don't loosen up right away in the customer. Tell you what, I've got a couple of these that are several years old, never replaced the bolts, and I've never tightened the bolts. Yeah. So that's pretty darn cool. Then these get these are going to the paint shop. These ones will go into paint next, and we normally let product pile up so we have a full paint room. Uh, these so are once white. you have to load the paint yeah. guns up or however yeah, you right. do it. You we don't want to just do you know 20 or 30 plates at a time. We end up filling four complete. So you have like a day of painting. Yes. Paint day. It's usually a couple days. Awesome. A lot of thought going into everything. Yeah, we're just trying to keep workflow as efficient as possible so we can keep the price at an affordable rate. Yeah, yeah. So can't afford to handle the product too many times. So this stuff is bolted together. Yeah. You got some stuff like the bases. Yeah. So these would be an example of a product that would need fabrication, whereas the ADAP target plates don't need any fabrication. So now this one's already welded up. This is ready for paint at this point. Anybody that's trained with us, you guys have heard me. We've done a number of videos on these. Awesome target base. You got your uh, regular popsicle sticks or the two by four, and it's heavy enough that it doesn't blow over and flat ground or, or uneven ground, you just dig it in a little bit, take your whatever your wood application is, and you're way to go. So I, I was out at your range, TA Target range, this past four days, and I saw you guys had a really cool steel upright. Yeah. So somebody uh, that's got a permanent setup where they're going to get shot to heck, we all know the two by fours get shot up, yeah. but that's not going to happen with that. Right, and we've had requests for that from departments especially, but even gun clubs, because there's a lot of different applications where the customer's going to want them to be downrange, but they don't want to have any risk of resetting anything, just because it's a live firing line and they don't want people going downrange. Makes sense. So that's coming with the steel What's upright. What's it called? The post? Yeah. We've just been calling them armored post. Armored post. Yeah. It's really it just, cool. It just Super replaces cool the two by four. Does anybody else do that? I've not seen it. I don't think so. People make steel posts, but they make them out of mild steel. So if you hit them, you're just going to punch through. Yeah. They got a lot of sharp edges, so we're making ours out of AR 500, so you ain't going to tear them up. Yeah. I like it. Totally durable. Leave it out in the rain. It doesn't swell up. Nope. Because that's the pain in the butt. Anybody that uses a 2x4 into a bracket like this, it gets rained on, and then you're out there trying to get it apart, cursing, beating yeah. it. Yeah, because it's 2x4 will swell. So yeah. It's all yeah. 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 So, awesome. These are my favorite bases. You're never gonna lose it. Never gonna never get t tipped over. Don't need sandbags. You know, the only the only downside is when you have somebody that doesn't know how to shoot and they shoot holes. <laughs> well, we have a solution for that coming soon. Better shooters. That would be a good idea. But no, we have another. Just put a teaser out. We do have another base coming soon. With it's got a that is completely armored up on the front. So it serves cool. a different purpose. It looks totally different. It's not going to be for everybody, okay. but for certain applications, you know, one or the other, they're going to fill every role. Working long distance, you got angles, right. things Anytime like that. Anytime where you absolutely cannot risk it, that base will fill that role. By the way, guys, it's been like high 90s, 95% humidity here in Pennsylvania for the last week. Yeah, in this shop, <laughs> uh, holding this, I have now broken a complete sweat. Good. Yeah. Yeah, but you look good, dude. <laughs> What's going on, Lee? So what are you working on? Bases. Bases. Lee is the guy who does all the production stuff for TA Targets. He is the man behind all the welds and fabrication that you see on the targets. So all of this stuff, all the steel in my trailer, all the steel on all the ranges across the USA, he welded it. This gentleman welded pretty much everything. I mean, if he's busy with other stuff, sometimes Ethan will jump in and, and take over his little position here. But yeah, 99.9% .9 has rolled through Lee's hands. Well, I gotta shake that guy's hand. Those are some sweet welds, man. Thank you. Side note, I've never had somebody ever email us and say, hey, my welds broke. 
So Yeah, those are sweet welds. I dig it. How long have you worked here? Four years? Four years. How do you like working for these guys? Great. Would you say that even if the bosses weren't standing here? Yes. Yeah, they take care of you? Yeah. Look at the look on Kirby's face here. Kirby's like, you He's better. Gotta say that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I can say having been around your family the last couple days, having uh, visited with you guys numerous times, it's a great family environment. This is a third generation company here, right? That's good. That's good. Look at that. Your business partner likes to give you a hug. Now this is your son's childhood best friend. Yes. You bet. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, like adopted son. Yeah, he spent uh, almost as much time at my house as a kid as he did at his own house, so yeah. Yeah. One thing that we're proud of is our average employee is here for nearly 20 years. Wow. That's average. That says a lot. As a business owner myself, as a guy that's worked for people, you see, especially now, Everybody just goes where the grass is greener because they're always thinking, you know, I got to find something better, find something better. You keep employees for 20 years, that's saying something. I dig it. Good stuff. Nice. Well, then after this process would be paint. You want to go check that out? Yeah, I'd love to see the paint cool. process. Okay, so this is uh, one of the paint areas you got. You got another one over there with some different product in it today. Yeah. You got a lot of stuff going on in here. Super efficient, racked out. And these are bases. Yes. So a lot of companies, you get the stuff, it's just metal. Yep. Why do you choose to spray it? And what kind of paint do you use? So anytime you buy anything, when you open up the box, what do you do? You, you take it in. You know what I mean? You want that first impression. So the first thing with the paint is you've spent a lot of money on the product. Okay. And when you open that box, you should get a finished product. You want them to open it and be like, oh. oh. Hey, I bought this TA Target Steel Target. Yeah. I, I want that effect and we want that effect on the customer because you've spent good money on your product. There's something to be said about having a refined product in your package when okay. you buy it. And then on top of that, after the customer receives the product, it's going to protect it from further rust. So yeah, we've talked about it a million times. When you shoot the front of the plate, you're going to chip off the paint. The lead's going to cover the plate and that's going to protect the front from rusting. But there's probably a majority of the system untouched by yeah, splatter. and they, these guys sit in dirt, in sand, in yeah. mud, so you put that nice, uh, and we'll put some footage up of them, but other, other videos we've done, you see it, that you guys use that nice tan color, and yeah. what kind of paint is it? It's direct to metal paint. It's okay. similar to automotive grade paint, but it's, it's direct to metal. So it's like something you paint a tractor with or something. Yeah, yeah more or less. But okay. tell them about the, you know, what's unique about how we so spray it. With the system we use, we actually ground out our carts. Okay. And we have an electrostatic gun. It positively charges the paint. And then when we spray, the paint is like, magnetically yeah. attracted to the base so itself. So kind of a powder coating itself. process? It's not powder coat. It's it not doesn't, heat. Yeah. Okay. It it's doesn't, just, it's like polarization, negative, positive. Cool. So you don't, do you not end up with a huge cloud in here then? No, no. You, you can see. So before we, when we just use an HVLP gun and we sprayed. Which is high volume, low pressure. Yep. This uh, whole room would turn tan. Which doesn't matter to any of you because you're just going to shoot it at anyway, but. <laughs> the, the, the end goal here is obviously if we consume less materials and we're more efficient with our process, our prices are better. Yeah. And on top of that, the finish adheres better. That's a big thing. It cut our paint consumption in half. Wow. In yeah. Half. That's cool. Of it not just going up into the atmosphere. Right, exactly. And onto the floor and yep. the walls and on the painter. I like that. You guys get it. I talk about it all the time. The stuff that we share with you is the best stuff available. And it's not just the best stuff because we want to be snobs. I'd rather buy two of these and have them for 10 years than I have some other ones that they're cheap and they will hold a base until a five mile an hour wind blows. Or right. they'll hold a, um, sorry, they'll hold a cardboard backer up and then the wind blows. So then you got to go find rocks. I don't want rocks on the ground at the no, range. Not Where at you the base got, of your target. So then you got to have a sandbag. And then you now you're getting a shovel and dragging sandbags around. Where these, it will do everything. And we've gone over that. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of like a what kind of person are you? Do you want to buy it once and be done with it or him and haw? If your only thing you're looking at is price, mm -hmm. and that's what someone's mindset is, they're Keep probably going. going to be disappointed right. with what Keep, we're offering. They don't going. see the picture of value. Mm -hmm. We're trying to do different uh, business differently. Uh, better ethics, quicker shipping times, better products. And yeah. around all of that, if you see value in that, 
you're going to buy and never regret it. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that, if you're of that mindset. But again, if you're just price shopping, there's plenty of guys making $99 targets, free shipping, and you'll probably lose your eye. But no joke. And we've done Literally. you guys. What's your eye worth? Yeah, we'll put a link up here to the video that we did last summer, punching holes through yeah. other steel targets. And then we shoot yours, and not only does it not punch a hole, it's still smooth. Yeah. And that's not just steel quality. It's the engineering you guys have done where it dispenses energy and dumps it to the ground. Yeah. And you'll see in that video that there, we're doing stuff with this steel that you can't and would be insane to do with most steel. And it's not just about keeping you, the shooter, safe. It's people 100 feet yeah. left or right or b behind. And yeah, it's good stuff. So what would be next? Packaging, yeah. assembly area, so maybe we can go over there and we can see how some of these mechanisms work. Yeah. I think I saw a plate rack on the ground over there ready we for We have shipping. a couple plate racks that are paid for, waiting for pickup. We can kind of give a rundown of some of that stuff. And I'll throw this in here now as we're talking. If you guys have questions on this stuff, I was just in the office with Curb and he, we were grabbing batteries and he answered the phone, TA Targets. So look them up, TA Targets and the technical AR500targets.com. Which is kind of funny because we started out with AR500 steel and yeah. then about a year and a half, two years in, began the transition away from that. But we, we kept the name. Yeah, it Everybody sense. knows us by TA Target. We have a couple components here that are already wrapped by our shipping manager, Mark. Unfortunately, Mark's off today, so he's not here, but we'll just kind of give you a rundown on what we normally do. Mark takes all the individual components and uses this cohesive wrap, which just keeps everything safe during transit. If somebody orders like your your uh, like keynote. Like our two third eight app, yeah. That's, That's what, what it'll ship is. in. It's gotta show up on your doorstep looking right like this. So and when you open up the box, these are the components that are gonna be in there. That's your two thirds eight app target. So that's basically that's going to come And the with, only thing that's not going to be in there is going to be a two by four, like a right. three or four foot piece of two by four. Yourself. So yeah, you'll have your top bracket. We've got a target plate that's wrapped up here. And then you'll get a 20 inch base in that box. And they all pack. And now that's nice. all painted up and pretty. Oh yeah. All fancy. We'll open up this target plate and show you guys. They're smirking a little bit because the gentleman that runs this department's not in today and they know that he's going to be annoyed that they're messing with his workspace. So the so beautiful, and that's, that's half inch 550 that one? Half inch, yeah. So that's the one that, I've got some of those that we have pounded thousands of times and they look pretty much like that, just gray instead of white because they're covered in sweet lead now. So yeah, this is the signature target. This is the one that if someone's buying a silhouette, by far the two third and half inch is the one that people grab more so than Then you anything. got a little parts kit in there with a bolt and oh, that's all on there. So normally people use a two by four and the two by four just drops down in the post here. Very soon you're going to see on our website an option for people that more or less need a post that is not gonna get destroyed whether you're a range trainer or have a club and you just don't want people going down range, this is an AR500 post that's gonna resist rifle rounds and it gets away from the two by four and the consumable post So idea. that's in, in, integral with the, the bracket so yep. you don't have a, in a, in a separate bracket. You can see that. And the cool part is because it's the same design up top, our hostage assembly can bolt right onto the post as well. One cool thing about a two by four is you can use a three foot, a four foot, a five foot, six foot, two by four to, to adjust the height. You, you've got a field with tall grass, right? So this is what comes in the box. You have the option on our website to add the hostage bracket. And then that will just slide right on the head bracket of our ADAP system. And you can lock a paddle right in. And typically there would be hardware holding this thing together. We don't have the bolts in right now. But it's, it's designed that you can buy it with or without the hostage bracket. It's just a nice functional. Super cool. Why is this so important to you guys? Well, just from a training perspective, now you've got something to make you even more accountable. This is small enough. Step back yesterday, we were at about 35 yards on their range. Getting a pistol shot on that, what is that, five inches maybe? Five by five. Five by five, carpenter eye. You can really start to hone in on accuracy. You gotta be like right there. 
And think about context. You think you're a hot shot with your pistol because you watch Instagram and YouTube? That's your wife. That's the bad guy. You got what it takes? How are you practicing doing that? You, you see it. Yeah, no Sorry, bolts. We, we, Remember, didn't, no we bolts. didn't bolt it on. Didn't <laughs> bolt it on. You see it instantly. Uh, instant feedback. You don't have to walk down range and look to see a hole in paper. You hear a tink and that sucker moves. And this is rifle rated or is this pistol? It's rifle rated. So this yeah. is the rifle one. Well, for one bolt. Then. Okay, one bolt so I don't dump it on the floor like a goofball. Four bolts it comes with. Yep, they come in a little packet. And you never have to do anything to them because this is absorbing your misses. So unless you're seriously goofy and you're at an acute angle, which, let's talk angles. These are 15 degrees. Yeah, you'll have about a 10 to a 15 degree fan that you'll have of fragmentation. Okay. So the, if you buy any of our products, we have a little diagram that I drew up that shows what that looks like to scale. And if you follow our recommended distances, it's not an issue for a, a safety concern as long as you're following the recommended distances. So this is for uh, the guy that wants something that's not gonna get splattered up. A professional range. Again, tightening the thumb screws helps the target not wiggle. You're shooting a lot of rifles at distance. You're not gonna be chewing up the two by four. So the two by fours in this equation are somewhat perishable. And one of the things we know is they get full of, of jacket fragments, which can cut you up, right? If you're not careful. Yeah. Super easy, huh? Yeah, it assembles just like the regular top racket, but now you've just got an armored post. And he, Ethan apparently loves the hostage swinger, so he wants to make sure that you guys understand. So somebody buys one of your targets, the cool thing is because you guys are so smart about it, if they don't buy the hostage target uh, out of the gate, they can call and order it from you later. Yeah. It comes with the parts and the four bolts and you throw it on. Yep, and people do that all the time. We have probably every week somebody's ordering just the hostage assemblies to fit onto their ADAPs that they bought, you know, even three or four years ago. Cool. And that's a cool point to add. If you have one of the original ADAP targets from back in 2015, this hostage assembly will work on those as well. So you've kept some continuity in your engineering. Yes. You guys have, and you have, guys have a bunch of other targets. Oh yeah. You've got falling trees, which we'll throw a link up to the video that we show that one. Uh, you've got different sizes of this. You've got the um, horizontal plate rack that you launched recently. You've got uh, uh, the larger base that you can use for the bigger targets and the heavier targets. What else? What am I forgetting? Poppers. Poppers, yes. We have poppers. Them. And those are nice. Yeah. There's a lot of companies that make poppers. Is there a popper handy? Right They're wrapped I'll up. I'll, I'll fetch one. All right, so pepper poppers. These have been, this, this style target's been around for a long, long time. I'm gonna stand this one up. This is the one most people see. He's all, there's also a classic example of this that's got a little taller uh, knob on the top that's um, a tombstone basically standing on top of this. And you guys are gonna open this one, which is a prairie dog? Sure, we can make it happen. Yeah, that's just showing the capability that we have. It's a little fun target. And people that are out west tend to like to buy this thing, set it out and use it long range with their rifles. And you've thoughtfully left some holes in the base so that it can get stakes, staked down to the back. dirt. Do they ship with the springs? You can buy them with or without. Okay. So that's up to the end user. I have to talk to you about getting some springs. So with the springs, there's adjustability. And then you can actually, with lighter caliber, say you're using a handgun and you don't want it to fall over. You just want it to kind of ring, move a little bit, but you don't really want to risk the time of going down range, whether you're teaching or working with a club or whatever. You can just set the springs and it's going to stand up. Okay. The best part, what I really love doing with these poppers with springs is when I'm using calibers like 308, and you can set them out a distance, 
and you'll get some really good reaction out of them. Okay, so it'll fall and then... It'll spring right back up. Kind of drop right back Everyone up. Everyone comes with stakes. Without the stakes, it'll probably flip in your face. Especially the heavier plates. So the stakes would just go through the ground like that. Drive them on a nice angle. Yep. And that holds everything in place. We've spent a lot of time together. We broke bread together. We've uh, had some cold drinks together. We've talked about families, about the way we love America and all that good stuff. In this industry that we work in, and I, I legitimately mean the industry because people throw it around this term industry. Like if you shoot guns and film it, you're in an industry, which to me is you are, you are a legitimate business fabricating products, which uh, you know, makes you part of an industry. And there seems like there's so many people that's like, oh, I like to shoot, thus I wanna, I wanna be involved with it all the time, so I'm gonna make something, like, like holsters or sights or um, steel targets. And the person has no real idea like what they're doing, but they, and they, so you see holsters in targets and sights and ammunition that are sa unsafe, garbage, not really like what we need. Hey, you guys are total shooters, sportsmen, hunters, uh, conservative guys that believe in American values, and you live it. Like, I spent the last couple days with your boys. They're out running in the dirt, you know, showing me chickens and... No TV. Go right. out and get dirty. Go, no TV, go out and get dirty. So it's not, it's not why I think this is important. It's not, uh, hey, we have the machines to make this. What can we make to make money? You guys are... Guys that are like, we shoot this stuff, we want to make stuff that other dudes will buy that's kick-ass, that's not already available. That's my interpretation. Yeah. It's like like this. I don't, is there anybody else making poppers like this? No. Oops, oops. And, and, and that's why I was asking, I knocked it all apart. It's all right, it'll go right back together. Like a lot of the stuff that you guys have done, there's other people that make a target the shape of a prairie dog but you have to like prop a stick behind it, which de defeats the point of having it a popper. Exactly. Or walk, uh, ride, ride, it more than once. Right, ride your four-wheeler down there to get it. But you guys, because your shooters are like, hey, uh, how do we go have fun and not spend the day walking up and down the range? Yep. So you can, uh, if you had like a really heavy caliber, you'd put uh, more tension on it? It depends on what kind of movement you want. Okay. I have gun clubs that buy these and they don't want any movement. So okay. they'll put the spring all the way back. Okay. And their whole goal is just keep it upright. So you could use it like that. And you're using spotting scopes, so they see the hit. Right. Okay. Now, if you wanted a lot of movement with something like this, you hit it with a 308, 65 Creedmoor with the setting it's at, you're gonna knock that thing flat back and bring it up. It'll cool. Be, it'll be violent on the lightest setting. It's cool. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> but yeah, be... you can, if you notice that it's hitting way too hard, you can add a little bit of, of tension and now it's gonna take a lot more to oh, actually Oh yeah, move. yeah. But that's when, when you need to have the stakes in place because when it slams that plate forward, it wants to lift the legs up. I know when you were working on this, which has been over a year, the-, the uh, Phoenix. I wanna spin around here. You guys can talk to that. But what I'm talking about is the plate rack. There's a couple companies that make these on the market. They don't look like this. This looks like it came out of NASA. And they didn't want to launch it until they were certain it worked perfect, it wasn't sending dangerous lead back to the shooters, because if our training is gonna kill us, I've seen a tourniquet put on from a lady getting hit in the wrist with a piece of uh, splashback. So let's talk target safety. One of the main things that p scares people about steel is it can hurt you. Yeah. It can hurt you. Well, ideally, you should be squared off to the target. I mean, that's kind of common sense. Our targets are the same as everyone else's in that aspect. If you're shooting at a really shallow angle, like from here, your bullets are still gonna fragment, but you're gonna send that fragmentation at a higher velocity out to the side. All right, so we're talking about the safe angles to use this stuff. This comes in the box. So straight on. Shooters out here, how close can I get with a pistol? 10 with, yards. 10 yards, even with and like a- And that's standard on all of our even products. Even with like a, like a 10 millimeter? Yeah. How about a 44 mag? 44 mag is where we typically would still start telling people to back up to 20. Back up to 20. And whenever you get into magnum calibers, and it's usually revolvers, 454, Casul, 44 mag. What about uh, like now we see all these hard, uh, like Underwood, Supervel, these hard, solid copper bullets? 
Is that an we issue? We have had the same experience with the solid topper as we had with the full metal jacket. Like what about like the rip round? Will that just blow your target over? No. That was a joke. That was a bad <laughs> joke. What'll what happen is it will fragment the bullet like another bullet. I was just kidding. That was a joke, guys. What about if we, if we purchase surplus military ammo that's got a steel core? That we would recommend you don't use. So don't use steel yeah, core we, ammo. We're, we're consistent about that across the board. Our targets, and we have tested with all of this ammo. These are gonna stand up better than anything else to that kind of ammo. And there's certain clients we have that in very controlled environments, because they're with military or they're with other units that are using that ammo, need to train with that. But even then, we don't recommend that they use that ammo on the target because you are shortening the lifespan tremendously over using pounds, ammo. pounds and pounds. Yeah, and it's I mean, like it, taking a steel hammer and just beating steel. A, and you're, yeah, you're looking at velocity and the size of the bullet. The smaller the bullet and the faster it's going, the more prone to damaging. All right, steel. so you want to use a projectile that's not made of ferrous metals. Yep. And you can test that with a magnet. You can yep. take a heavy magnet, put it on the bullet tip if you're not sure, and then uh, speed. So if I go by five five six or uh, six five Creedmoor, one of these fast moving small bullets, speed's a problem. Yes. And all of our distances we've calculated and tested with ammunition. That's three thousand feet per second at the muzzle. It's very easy with especially 5.56 NATO to get XM193 that's coming out at like 3,400 feet per second. And it's not the projectile. It's right. not that the projectile's got steel in it's it. It's the speed. It's going so fast that it's just Yeah, that's walloping. a standard full metal jacket, lead core bullet. But because of that velocity, if you started shooting really close with it, you're going to start. The distance for half inch 550, which is 30 yards, even at 30 yards, it could potentially start. And if you read any of our literature, we allow closer shooting than most companies, but it has to be within the parameters of the ammunition we described. Right. As soon as you leave that threshold, you have to start backing up to 100 yards. Um, and again, and that's no joke. You can yeah. die. Yeah, that's no joke. Yeah, I mean it's like not like it's not. Haha, ha, he's just exaggerating. You can have a chunk of lead coming off the target at thousands of feet per second. So I wanted to make sure people understand when they start getting on an angle, Kirby, you said about 15 degrees? Uh, 15 degrees coming off of that plate, you're gonna have to fan. You actually take a ditch. So, so we're talking like this. Yep. Something like that and like that. Why that's important is if you don't have a berm off to the side of the target, you will have something flying off this way. Yep. And you just know, don't, don't leave your lunch sitting here. Or your vehicle. <laughs> or your vehicle. Paper targets that are over here are gonna get peppered. But you guys ingenious, ingeniously set this up and you, the angle, you had to put some thought into that because it could be more vertical, too much, you don't see enough of the target. And this dispenses so much of the energy. Yeah, it, even glancing hits, because this can move, you're gonna scrub velocity so fast. I mean, the ability to move is just gonna absorb all that. It's just like, like if, if you decide to like stop me from pushing you versus you just let me push you a little bit. That same amount of energy, it's absorbed rather than you getting, you know, like a, a bruise. Yeah. Very cool. And Kinda that's like also why we don't mount them straight up. I mean, we could have done that as well, but then all of that load of that impact is gonna get spread on where it's hit. So why not just do it like some of the companies that mount it straight up, but kind of floppy woppy? Because that's not consistent. Yeah. Ha ha. And, and the idea is we want the same reaction from this steel plate every single time. So you're saying the ones that are floppy woppy, you don't know it might go this way one right. time, might go that yeah, way. If uh, there's a couple plates that can move side to side, they'll have maybe one hole in the middle okay. and a hook or something, and they might have a little bit of movement, but even those, they mostly just rotate. And if you envision that, if it can just do that, you're changing that presentation of the target plate and you're essentially creating those glancing blows we were just talking about if all it can do is move. You guys have tested these up to what caliber? 50 BMG. 50 BMG at what distance? 100 yards. And what was their degradation to the steel? And now there's of course AP rounds and things well, like yeah, that. It, any of our targets that we rate for 50 BMG we're rating for ball ammunition. So 50 BMG is a little unique. It's obviously a behemoth of a round. And this target's not designed for 50 BMG. You could shoot a 50 at it, but you're gonna flip it over just because of the sheer energy of a 50. But the steel would be unharmed. But we do have targets that are purpose-built 
450 BMG, and it uses the same half inch AR550 steel. Okay. But 50s, obviously, people know that they have armor piercing rounds, incendiary, Ralphus rounds. So with the 50, we would recommend staying away from all the armor piercing ammunition and sticking with what they call the ball ammo, which is in this, it's a 600 some grain projectile, or use the 750 grain AMAX and it won't damage the steel. I'm just looking back here, I remembered that you had the sticker on here, which yep. you guys grabbed earlier. I'll take a good pick of it for you guys to see, but you got a little cheat sheet here. Yeah. It says this gun, this caliber, this distance. Yep. So if you don't remember, you don't have to just walk behind the target and take a peek. I remember you telling me, you guys take, you guys have a target called our Goliath. Yeah. And it's one of these shapes, yeah. but it's a full silhouette. Yep. And it's a half inch thick, just like this. Yep. You guys took that or take that out to the big machine gun shoot every year, right? Yeah, twice a year. And you were telling me one time, what did you say about that? piece of steel. Well, the first Goliath we ever designed, we took it down to Knob Creek in Kentucky to the machine gun shoot because uh, we, we torture test our targets. That's what we do. We what happens what they'll take. at that shoot? What's going on there for people that don't? There are 50 machine guns on the line, anything from M16s to full auto 50s. There are mini guns, wow. everything and they're shooting simultaneously. So people, before the sh shoot starts, you put targets down range. Yeah. There's like yeah. stuff out there to blow up. There's like yeah. cars out there. People put like refrigerators should, out there. It should be on everybody's to-do list to visit Knob Creek at least one time. If and, you're in the shooting industry, you should go. And I think what you had told me, what stuck with me is that target was out there just eating steel while all the others were gone. Yeah, everything else was exploded and burning and our Goliath was the last target out there. So the steel, just so the listeners and viewers understand, was getting so hot that it was just literally like coming apart. The first one we had out there, I was actually fortunate enough, I had my binoculars on, we had it out there about 200 yards and I was watching when they actually defeated the plate. And the minigun, which is a 308 caliber uh, machine gun that's throwing out how many thousand rounds? It was over 4,000 rounds a minute. Over 4,000 So that's like the Yep, think and of what, like six barrels you, rotating. Yep, it's like a Gatlin gun. And, and that's the full size version, like a USPSA cardboard it's a target. Big, yeah, yeah, and big the target. mini gun had the target plate pinned back against So the now it can't dump so energy. It move, and then a 50 cal with armor piercing rounds in came up across it and the target plate just exploded. It just blew it up and shattered it. <laughs> that's cool. But how many bullets do you think it took? Uh -huh. oh my God. Hours and hours. Hours and hours of nonstop machine gun fire. So not to bash competitors, but just as a comparison for people watching or listening, what did you see with other steel targets out there? They weren't. Uh, if you, they, won't put you can, they won't put them out? They won't. You can take a little bit of, you know, bragging a little bit. I'm confident you could take anybody else's targets on the market and stick it out there. Anybody's? Anybody. Even the guys that have been doing it for a while, yes, the big companies? I, I don't care which target it is, the Goliath with the half inch AR-550 and the way it's designed is superior. So if you lasting. were like a, a range owner in uh, Texas or like Knob Creek or one of these places where they do lots of long range shooting, yeah. you go buy that, you spend the money. How much is it? 575 with an armor post. So retail, 575 bucks, and that thing will be out there in the prairie or wherever they put it for years. Yep. People shooting at it with their with their hunting rifles and sniper yep. rifles are going to do nothing to it. Obviously, everything that is created by man has a service life, but we are attempting to make nearly indestructible targets. At the most, you might have to replace some bolts. Yep. Or right. Flip the plate. You can unbolt it and put the fresh flip side the out. Flip the plate around because yep. you will start to get some deformation. Interesting, you just said that. This, I have so many of these from you guys that have, and I've never flipped one. Yeah. Um, we did have a guy show up at a S12 event that pretended not to listen to the two emails about steel core ammo. Yeah. And he whacked the heck out of a few of them. Yeah. But it still didn't really cause divots that have caused any kind of dangerous yeah. situation. Talk about that, general target safety. Like when should, when's enough enough? So we get questions a lot about that from people who are thinking about buying. And then we'll have customers who will send me pictures and be like, hey, look at my target, tell me am I good? all this other stuff. So if you have a dimple, it's not necessarily a safety concern. It becomes a safety concern once you start getting about the diameter of a pencil okay. and you can feel it with your finger. Okay. You know, it, it'll be a substantial little ding that you would see when that happens. What if you've got very deep 
craters that look like like you're looking like at the, the moon. plates actually curve. Yeah, if you're like, plate, like looking at the front of the plate, like like you could like drop water in it and it would hold water. Then that's a problem. Okay. You want to avoid that. And if you're following our range distance recommendations, our ammo requirements, really, you're not going to see that in the short term or even long term. For most people, these targets are going to be a lifetime target. Can you just grind them down? No. 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 What happens if you do? The, if you start getting craters on the front, or if you already own a target that has those craters on it, take those bolts out if there are targets and flip them around. That's the time to flip them. You can take a picture of the sticker if you want to keep the sticker so you have your cheat sheet, but flip that target around so you got that smooth surface again, and then watch what ammo you're using. Now, one thing to point to out, we have, we have one target, or a couple targets that we have confirmed over 100,000 rounds from full, full auto fire, and those have slight dimples on the front. They're not craters. So the, the thing to remember it is- It looks like a pencil point. It looks like a little pencil point touching them. So how it was explained to us from the chemist at the mill is as the steel is cooling, and this is air-cooled steel, it's allowed to just naturally cool down. It is going to absorb imperfections from the air around it. They called that layer decarb. It's only a couple thousandths of an inch. It's very, very thin. And so if you're hitting that with 5.56, and your close range, it's possible to see little tiny, almost look like pores. They look I like see. a pencil point. Those are perfectly fine. And the plate that we buy actually work hardens as you use it. So work it's going hardens. to get stronger and tougher over time. That's cool. So I, I get questions about that sometimes. Over time is our half inch 550, especially in our full size ADAP, after you get over 20,000, 30,000 rounds, you'll see it start to curve. Get a slight curve. And it won't curve towards you, it'll curve away from you. And what's happening is on the face of that steel, it's getting hit with those bullets over and over and over again. Every single bullet that hits that plate, it is putting heat into that plate. And as that spot that gets hot, that steel relaxes a little bit. And the steel in the back stays cold, so the front starts to relax mm. and the back stays tight. And that's why you'll see some of our half inch 550 targets after 20, 30,000 rounds. I've got some rounds, of those. I've got some of those, yeah. That start curving away from you because the face of the plate will actually relax, start to relax, and the back stays tight and it, and it allows it to so curve si away. It's a sign of a well used target. Exactly. It's still and perfectly it's, safe. Yeah. You're At that point, consistent if you flip the plate, it will relax the opposite side and it'll start to push it back flat again. And the key would be to catch that, if you see that it's warping, and it's usually heavier rifle calibers that are gonna make that happen. Or if you have a range or you're training people with high volume 5.56, it can happen. I see. But you wanna catch that and flip it before it gets too much. Okay. Because then if you think about it, if it's curved away from you and you flip it, now there's a lip kind of coming out towards you. So it's about preventative maintenance. Most people are never gonna see that happen. We, we have targets on our range that don't have any curve at all. And then we have other ones that we brought out 20 machine guns and spent an entire day just loading magazines and dumping on that plate. Tough and job, it's, guys. It sucks. Tough job. Yeah, that was rough. It's tough to take. <laughs> it actually, it was 17 degrees one of those days. So it was oh, it was, cold. Rough. It, was it was cold. I was actually not there that day. <laughs> but we did, we actually had an event at a training facility in West Virginia. We had over a dozen guys at one point on the line at what, 10 yards, 15 yards? Yep. All with 5.56. Five, and just to and clarify, again, we're not recommending this, you is, do that. this is people in a controlled environment with known weapon systems, with known projectiles, known distances. We all were using the proper ammo. Yes. We were all using 16 inch or less 5.56, five, so we knew, we knew, knew where the velocity, velocity range was. So yes, it was controlled. We don't recommend that. There's one but AK in the room. There was one AK, but regardless, we did that for a specific reason, and this was as we were starting to get into the half-inch AR-550. That this was, is one of those don't try it at home right, stories. Right, we wanted to see what can this plate take, and that entire weekend, we just hammered that thing. We had it on a mover, we had it stagnant, we had, we took that target Where is with that us plate? to you every single It's on the range, we still use it. It was setting beside the 50 yard firm. To the left of the 50 yard firm, yeah. the red plate. That's and that was three long. years ago. That's that rad. Did. I thought you guys would put it up, build a little nice wood frame around it. It's not like it, Nick. We want to break it's it. not ready. You want to break the it? Goal, that was one of the first ones we built, and our goal that weekend was to break that part. Still That's have, awesome. Still didn't break. That's cool. <laughs> and you'll see, like I said, if you look at the front of the plate, it's got curve to it, and it has 
what almost looks like a little bit of a dragon scale texture, but it's like someone took a pencil point in Play-Doh and just like lightly touched it. It's not in the, it's just very light indents you can yeah. barely feel. So well, I have a, a local butcher shop. I've said this on many videos. They have a sign over the butcher counter that says, good meat's not cheap, cheap meat's not good. And it's like, I think that goes for pretty much everything in life. Yeah. I've got comments on videos, man, those are expensive. I buy Michelin or Cooper or whatever tires, you know, I, I could go to, and I have bought lower grade tires. It's not about snobbishness. It's that I drive 70,000 miles on a set of tires. So I want to buy a good set of tires. Sometimes you just invest the money in the thing. And if you appreciate this kind of stuff, you know that you're going to get your money's worth out of it. Yeah. I know I have. I know that the, the story right there, it's, that's a fantastic illustration. And I know they're not lying. Good dudes, family men, hardworking guys, and we're in the heartland here with a company with you guys buy American-made steel, um, American workers. Now How do we, they find you? Best place if you want to talk or see what we're about. Instagram is definitely the first I would recommend. Just type in TA Targets and you will find us um, and website is another one just type in tatargets.com we do have a youtube i have some videos out on youtube so just type in ta targets you'll find that i have many plans for that just time constraints and time what would you say to folks that just spent an hour watching what would you say i would i remember the well, i think it was the first time you came to our range and did a training course you asked the three of us why did we do, what do we do it? What's our goal in this business? And I remember what I told you then, and I told these guys before, if we just make the highest quality product on the market, we don't have to set sales goals. We don't have to set artificial thresholds. We can just do the best we can and be the best in the industry. And if we do that, everything else will take care mm -hmm. of itself. And you pontificated on that. You added to that. What, what did you say after your dad said that? I remember that a few years ago. We want to be able to stand behind our products 100%. And I don't want to ship something out. I'm standing behind 100% if uh, it's going to get destroyed very quick. Or hurt somebody or, exactly. hurt, or hurt property. Not something that we want to happen. Super cool. Guys, I appreciate that you took the time to visit with us. I appreciate that you guys took the time to have us at your range again, have us at your homes. We broke bread, we had drinks, we played with babies. His youngest puked on me, which was cool. Uh, Good boy. <laughs> yeah, it was fun, it was fun. Take a look at their stuff. Share it if you have it. Keep, keep the stuff in, in mind about the safety because we shouldn't be training to protect ourselves and then hurt ourselves in the process. Kirby, Jared, Ethan, Mickey, be well.